Um, sorry it's taken me so long to get this video done. Um, I'm going to assume you've already got down on how to load uh, and processing, you know, your lights, your flats, your darks, and all that. So uh, let me just go ahead and set this uh, for where I'm going to save it. Click open, and I'm going to go right into tools. And uh, let's say I've already taken care of, gotten all the, the background stuff done to where I have my files and I'm going to go into combine RGB. I'm going to add a file and go up and let's see I went too far. I'm going to go into bubble, APP and here's mine. I did a bunch of processing so don't look at all that but these are my three files after uh, I got done running them through tab 0 and tab 1 and 2. So I'll click open and it's going to ask for a composite and this is uh, newer. You probably have the version already loaded like this where you can choose uh, different presets for what they are and uh, you can come down here. Uh, this is HSO, SHO, HOO, etc. So I'm going to use H, uh, SHO Hubble 1 and click OK and so it's going to assign my oxygen, so it's like yes, sulfur, yes, and that should be it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate and see what it brings up for me. So it's exactly what I expected. This is usually what you should get is this green, blue, purple kind of a look to it. And in order to get rid of some of this, to get rid of the green, you have to inject it into your other colors. All right. So what we're going to do here is, and these are kind of backwards. So it's S H O. So red, green, blue. Uh, you, if you load it manually, uh, it's easier to follow, but it loaded S H O in a weird way, but R, red, green, blue. So in order to get this more, to get the green out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, to your other channel. So we're gonna go to sulfur, and in sulfur, I'm gonna bring up, let's start small. I'm gonna bring it up to 50% green, and then I'm gonna go to oxygen, and I'm gonna bring that up 50% green. And basically what you're doing is canceling out the effect by boosting the other numbers. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but watch what happens. There we go. So just by injecting 50% green into each one of those channels, you can see where it's taking some of the green out. Uh, you can also try to reduce a little bit of the green in your, in your hydrogen alpha. So you can bring that down to say 90. And then if you want to, in, in to inject a little bit more red, you can do that. Click Calculate. So again, it's lightened it up a little bit. Uh, it's kind of starting to create some yellows that are in there, and that's because I'm, I'm mixing red into green. So let's take our red out. Let's leave that at 90, and then let's go back to ox oxygen and sulfur, and let's bring our green channels all the way up we want to get rid of all that green and then let's hit recalculate okay so let's still got some green we definitely got some cyan and we got some blues in there some golds are just starting let me blow this up a little bit there we go so I want to get more of the green cast out so in order to do that I've already boosted my green channels in sulfur and oxygen to offset the hydrogen alpha but I'm still lacking a little bit. So in order to, to better the effect, to create more of an effect, you come up here to those multipliers and the multipliers are times one, times one, times one. And this is basically how much you're injecting of that particular color. So on sulfur, I'm gonna bring it up to say 2.5, just because that's a, usually on this kind of stuff that works well for me, I found. So let's hit 2.5 on sulfur. There we go. Now it's got a little red and more of the green, but it's also interjecting more yellow because it's on the red and green channel. So on oxygen, same thing. I'm going to pull that up to about 2.5. Hit recalculate. 
there we go. Now we're a little bit closer to being SHO. So I can also, let's see, what else can I do? I can increase these more if I want to. Um, I can try to uh, bring the luminance in, in to one of the other channels to, to make it uh, more noticeable. Now I am gonna bring more luminance in on the hydrogen alpha, uh, just cause I want to capture more of the detail. So let me back out of here. There you go. And as you notice, it's lightened up now quite a bit. Uh, and that's because I've increased my luminance. So your luminance can be a good thing, but also be careful too, cause sometimes too much luminance will distort and add too much noise. So I've created a little bit more. Let's see, let's, how are we looking here? Yeah, not bad. Um, let's do the same a little bit on sulfur. Let's bring that up just a little bit. Thinking about 10 on that. And then let's bring up oxygen to about 10, I think. Let's try. I may have brought that up too much, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I've actually darkened it. Um, so let's take the limits back down on oxygen and just leave it up for sulfur and hydrogen alpha and see what happens. Crispy did it a little bit. So again, take that back down because I didn't like it. And uh, let's recalculate it. Go back to where we had started with. There we go. So yeah, so that's starting to get pretty close to what SHO should look like. So from this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm saying creating a temporary RGB, started font and labeling it, so I'm gonna say okay. Yes, I do want to override the last one. This is because I've been was working on this before, so I'm gonna keep getting that error that pops up. All right, I'm done here. Let's go into cancel and I'm gonna pull back up what I was just working on because this is the composite. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and clean it up. Let's take it into batch modify. And let's crop it. So I'm going to decide where I want to start. Left click hold and drag my box. Release, got my thing there and clip crop okay. I'm gonna go ahead and save it off. Yes, I'm gonna overwrite the previous file. And now this should be my cropped version. It is. And then let's go ahead and remove light pollution, which will also calibrate my background. So remove light pollution. And it's going to run a quick iteration for a base point. And then here's where I'm going to start. So a couple of things here. You want to stay away from dust. You want to stay away from nebulosity. So choose black areas or as black as they can be and do small squares and avoid stars and avoid nebulosity. And I'm just going to go all the way around. Um, you don't have to do as many, but I've found that if you, especially if you have a lot of gradient or, you know, casting across your photo, that the more you do um, around it, it seems to get a better sampling. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's worked for me. So I tend to go in and I tend to make a lot of little boxes. Well, a lot, like 10 or so. And I'll click calculate. And it will pull some of the nebulosity out of it by just, that's the way it happens. So there we go. All right. Uh, that looks actually pretty good. So I'm going to click OK and save. And yes, I'll throw the file again. Um, okay, so before I go any further, and actually I should have done this when I was doing combined RGB. So come over here to the right side and be sure that you got these ticked up to fours so that when you do a movement, it's very small instead of large, huge movements. And then click on saturation. There we go. And as you can see, it made a big difference just doing that. And then let's look at our base. So base is just whatever's pleasing to the eye. 
Um, you can go up, you can go down. If you just choose one, it'll show you what the effect is. I mean, that's just ridiculous, unless you like that. I don't know. You know, if you untick saturation, you know, your color kind of goes away. And basically, that's all it is. Saturation is color. Uh, but that base is too high, so if I bring it down one, let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's okay. And then let me go down a little bit further to 15. Mm, too dark, so maybe 20, the low 20. Yeah, all right, I can work with that. Um, okay, so from here, let's go into HSL Selective Color. Oh, am I even on the right one? Probably not. I wasn't, was I? Mm -mm. There we go. All right, now I'm on the correct one. All right, so let's go into HSL Selective Color. So understanding HSL Selective Color, if you come over here to your left side, this is the colors you can choose from. You red, yellow, and green. From red, yellow, and green, you can create cyan, you can create blue, you can create magenta, uh, you can uh, adjust your grays, or you can adjust all the colors at one time. And that's basically what that means. When you're on that particular color, your sliders down here will depend on what you want to inject. So if I want to put more red into this photo, while I'm on the red channel, I will move this to red as far as I want or as little as I want or if I want to go opposite of that color to go to the other to take it out then I'll go to its opposite so here on these that's red to cyan green to magenta blue to yellow and then we have saturation and luminance again now what HSL selective color goes off of is an HSL color wheel and if you go to Google and just type up HSL selective color uh, chart or color wheel it'll pull this up or something similar to this so here's your reds here's your green here's your yellow right so if I inject another color anywhere into here depending on what it is it'll pull towards that color so and for instance if I have yellow and I don't want to create orange then I have to put some red in so yellows up here I want to get more gold or orangey I need to inject red. Uh, same thing for greens. Uh, if I want more greens, then starting from green, uh, I can inject a little bit more blue, uh, excuse me, a little bit more yellow, which will bring me closer to green. So the opposite of yellow is blue. The opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. So it's the exact same thing as you see over here. The opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. Opposite of blue is yellow. So that's how it's operating. So if you want to, let's say, uh, just so for instance, we want to bring in more gold colors here. If we want to bring in more gold. Uh, what I'm going to do to get to gold is I need to adjust both my yellow channel and my red channel to get orange or gold depending on how you look at it so I'm on my red channel I want to make things a little bit more golden color so I'm going to come down on red and I'm going to take my blue yellow slider and I'm going to push that to yellow so I'm starting with the red I'm injecting yellow that should give me more gold and it's giving me a lot more yellow for sure so it's probably too much so let's take that back down to let's say 50 and if you don't like the way it popped up so like if you didn't like this at all um, then just take it back down to zero and hit calculate again and it will uh, take it back to where you were just remember if you hit apply then every everything you've done gets applied to it and you're going forward so uh, let's see all right so I actually kind of did this wrong I started with red but this isn't red this is actually yellow so let's blow this up this is actually more yellow in color, not red in color. Here's the reds here. Reds and magentas are in here. Um, and I want to get more gold. So starting with yellow, let's take over here. Let's click that to yellow. 
And then now let's in inject some red into it. So let's do small movements. Let's say, let's inject about 50% of red. Hit calculate. And not sure how well your monitor is, but that's just made it more, more gold in color. So if I really want to get a lot of it, I'm going to push it all the way over to red. Hit calculate. And that should bring me a lot of gold color into there. There we go. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Um, so blue, so let's go to cyan. Uh, on cyan, so a couple of things we're going to do here first, though. I got a lot of magenta, magenta stars, which don't look realistic, and it's a, an effect that's produced from SHO, uh, from, the, from narrowband filters. So one of the things I'm going to go do first is let's go to magenta. And remember, the opposite of magenta is green. But I also don't want to interject a lot of green in here. So let's do this in small steps. Let's take this to about 50% towards green to get rid of the magenta. And let's hit calculate and see what it does. Okay, it's taken a little bit out. There's still a lot in there. Um, let's see. Let's try pulling the saturation down instead. So here's your saturation. And let's pull that down about 15% and then just see. So there's no rule or thumb on how much of a slider to use, how much to use, how much not to use. Um, it's just trial and error. So, you know, if I went down to 28, you just do whatever is appealing to you, to your eye, whatever looks good to your eye. Yeah, a little bit more. So then let's, so again, let's see what happens if I go completely over to the green side and see what it does. Okay. So now my stars are starting to look a little bit more natural. They're never going to get completely natural, but they're a lot more natural than what they were. So I've still got a little bit of reds in there, but I'm out of the magenta. So, all right, let's go to cyan now. And in cyan, if I want to bring in more, of course, I'm just going to apply cyan. So let's go all the way over. Let's just see what the effect is. Because I can always go back. Yeah, boy, that's really blue. And also, if you've noticed, uh, I'm now introducing artifacts. Whoops, too much. I'm also now introducing artifacts uh, by doing too much. So I can't do, that's way too too heavy. So if I come back down, let's say, well, let's try, let's try about 15, 20%. Let's try that. That should pull a lot of that out. If not all of it, it depends. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. So it pulled quite a bit out. I was still able to probably get a little bit of a cyan cast in there. Uh, so there's a little bit in there. Um, I still got a little bit of green that's in here. Uh, but uh, remember, green is, a, is from blue and yellow. So if I want to take the green out, my opposite of green is magenta. So here again, I can start pushing more magenta into it or taking it out. Um, what if I took my saturation down? Let's see what happens there. Mm, very minor change. Very, very minor, I would say. Um, not a lot. Let's see if I go the other way. I'm just out of curiosity. And again, just play with it and whatever feels right to you, or whatever looks good, go with that. So yeah, it didn't change much. I've still got some in here. So I'm going to put this back down to zero because I'm not really doing much of anything that's being appealing to me. I'm going to hit calculate, but I do like where I'm at so far. So once this gets done moving again, now I'm going to go to apply, which is going to permanently make the changes and then it resets all my sliders back to zero so if I want to keep going with golds I mean I, I can stay on yellow and I can keep punching the red and click calculate and if I like what I'm doing I can hit apply it'll keep that it'll reset my sliders back and then I can pump more red into it and just keep going and keep going and keep going as much as I want um, to me this is too red uh, it's it's almost kind of getting clownish looking, so I don't like that. So I'm going to pull that back down to zero. Click calculate. I'm not applying it yet. I'm just calculating it. So let's hit calculate. 
There we go. Uh, and I'm closer now to what a true SHO color is. So that's all we're doing. Uh, again, it goes off of your color wheel. So whatever predominant color you're starting on to get to the color you want, then you have to inter inject from its sides to wherever it is. So in other words, if I want a magenta, um, I would probably start with blue and add red. Uh, if I have a yellow and I want green, uh, you would start with yellow and then add green, which will bring it this way. Um, or excuse me, I'm sorry, that's wrong. If you have yellow and you want green, you would go to blue. Um, so yellow, blue, make green. Um, same thing with uh, with cyan's. If you want a cyan color, you would start with blue, interject, inject, excuse me, green, and that'll bring you to here. So just think opposites. If you're trying to take a color out, go the opposite way of it, and that's that's how HSL selective color works. So let's see. I think I already hit apply, but let me do it one more time, and then let's click create, and we'll click OK. Again, I am overriding files that I already did. And now after it's done, I'll just hit cancel. And I know this is where I'm at because it was uh, RGB combine, uh, batch modifier, modify LPC was light pollution correction. CBG was calibrate background, which does automatically when you remove the light pollution. Uh, and then finally, SC is for selective color, which I've done that as well. So this is where I'm at. Now, coming over here to the right side, there's a couple of things I can do here. Um, one thing that I think I'm going to go ahead and do right off the bat is, uh, well, number one, back out a little bit because that's just way too much. Um, I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit. This is just going to bring me a little bit more detail. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to bring it up to about 10. If I do too much, it will create artifacts around the stars, which is also where your protect will come in. But again, I don't want it to look cartoonish. I want it to look natural as much as I can. So there we go. So that's definitely given a little bit more um, sharpness to the picture. But it does... Uh, it can start creating artifacts. So when I say artifacts, you'll see how it's starting to ring my stars a little bit. You want to be careful when you're doing that. Um, you don't want to ring out your stars with your protect. So your sharpens, uh, let's try about nine, eight, eight point eight nine. Let's see how much that goes away. There we go, a little bit. So while it'll sharpen your stars, um, and in this case, it's actually made a little bit better by doing a little bit of, a little bit of sharpening on it um, because it's made everything a little bit more pronounced. So about 8.8. I, I Usually I wouldn't go much more than 10, but it depends on what data you're using. So um, it's always going to differ from one side or the other. The other th uh, thing I would do is I would come down here to saturation. And uh, just to show an extreme, so here's saturation at 0.37, which actually should darken it, I think. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's kind of saturating the color, um, which did darken it. So that's almost too much. Uh, and then here's what happens when there's too little. So it kind of brightens it up, but you're also losing color. See, so this might look more natural, um, I guess, if you're thinking of natural. Uh, 15 was probably a good spot. Um, let's try 20, just to kind of get the colors to pop a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. So we're getting a little bit, a little bit more into the classic SHO. Uh, let's see, I can highlight a little bit. So let's, uh, here, here again, here's an extreme. So here's 141 on the highlight. And sometimes these sliders won't help at all. Uh, other times it will. So the highlight in this particular case has just really dulled it down. Um, it's not pleasing at all. So if we take it down to zero, let's see. Uh, actually, I think I started at zero, but let's see what happens. 
Yeah, there we go. It brightens it up a little bit. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I can adjust the contrast if I want. Again, remember to make sure you change these all to four so you don't have huge runs. Um, so let's just say, let's put some contrast on there, see if that does anything that will help the picture or reduce it. So it kind of depends. It's giving some pretty decent contrast um, between my colors. So I actually kind of like that. That actually came up well. And then I can also come back up here, and this is where I can adjust my black points. So if you look at the graph, I'm already clipping my black points. When it says clipping, it means you're, you're coming into um, your, your graph, in, into your... Uh, Oh, God, I, I can't think of the name of it now. Um, but that's what we're talking about when we're clipping. Ideally, you want this curve. You want to just barely be touching the end of the curve here. And it goes up and comes back down. Uh, and I'm uh, uh, histogram. That's the name of it, histogram. So if I back down the blacks a little bit, it'll bring me out of here. A little bit more it's like right here is where I'm coming into it there we go and as you see now I'm just hitting the base of the histogram um, but to me that's too light uh, it, it's just it's too light to me there's there's I don't like that um, so I want it a little bit darker than this uh, but I also want to kind of keep it bright so mm, little tiny increments let's just see what happens you know, it came a little darker. I think I was at 1025 or 1027, something like that. So, yeah, there you go. So that, to me, that's much more visually appealing when it's darker like that. But again, I'm clipping in here. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you just keep playing with your sliders uh, until you get something that you like. Um, and at this point, I can go ahead and save it off to uh, whatever it was that I, that I was working on. Um, you can either go ahead and save it as a FITS file uh, if you want to work on it later on, or save it as a, uh, a X file or a JPEG, or um, what else? You can save it as, uh, yeah, FITS, TIFF, or JPEG. So you can save that either way you want. And you just save it off as, that way. So. Depending on how much you inject in HL Selective Color is going to depend on what you're able to do. So, uh, a couple of examples. Um, let's see. Actually, I think I opened up the wrong. Yeah, there we go. So, here's here's one I did. I kept it lighter. Uh, and this is just saved as a, as a TIFF file. But if you can see... There's the difference. I didn't inject as much gold and I actually reduced my blues out a little bit because I was looking for something what I would consider to be more natural in nature, um, which I, I like this because it brings up a lot of the highlights. So basically all I did is I didn't lighten it much. I didn't do much lightening on it at all. So there's different versions you can do of these. Um, depending on what you want to do. Now, there is also a tool, so this is a little bonus uh, that I'm going to give you. Uh, let's go back to the composite. So this is what happened when I put the three together, right? And I've made my first RGB image before I went in and did selective color or any of that stuff. So we're going to go back here for just a second. And one of the things you can do to start off with a clean slate, so to speak, is uh, go ahead and batch modify. We'll just run through this real quick. Let me show you. I'm just going to batch modify, left click, hold, drag. I'm going to crop it. Okay, and yes, I'm going to open it again. Uh, so this is now what I just got done remodifying again. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove light pollution like I did before. I'm just doing this again. And I'll show you a neat effect here in just a minute. So let's do this. This. I'm not going to make as many as I did on the other one. I just want to get it close. 
Hit calculate. There we go. And OK and save. OK, override. Now, um, so I did an LPC, which is a remove light pollution, and then I did a calibrate background. So this is where I ended up at. Um, calibrate star color doesn't work very well in narrowband because it's it's not true RGB so it it's not going to do a whole lot but it does give you some interesting effects so if you go into your calibrate your star color it's pulling in a sample I'm going to make two boxes one here one here or you can do the entire picture it's up to you uh, and click calculate the first time and it may take a minute or two to kind of roll through it yeah so <laughs> as you can see it's really messed up my colors it's created a lot of blue you'll see all that blue that's in there which is unnatural uh, and here's where it started was on this kind of a plane and here's what it did to correct it well there's not that many blue stars um, so you can get rid of blue stars uh, by coming down here and changing uh, blue versus red here so let's come over about 10 and then hit calculate and this is to drive these bluish stars back up this back up this incline so to speak back up this uh, edge there we go so even if you're doing RGB uh, if you do a calibrate star color just remember again there's not a lot of blue stars so you're not going to get a whole lot of blue stars in there. there's going to be a very small portion of them as compared to the other stars that are there so I could probably even go a little bit more um, let's say uh, I don't know let's try 15 so again blue but I want them red push to red I wouldn't worry about slope and magenta and green I mean you can mess with those a little bit if you want to it's up to you there we go so now I've got a few more blue out so let's click and save that one all right so now when I go in here to this last one calibrate star color there we go. But uh, so my, my stars probably look a little bit more natural, but the problem is, is now I've added the green cast to it again. So if I go into selective color, uh, I can try to take some of the green out, but it's going to be very difficult. So let's say if I go straight to green, uh, the opposite of the green is magenta. Uh, and then let's see, I'd probably take my saturation down uh, quite a ways. Let's just see what happens, if I can even make it do anything. Yeah, okay. I did a little bit. So uh, I pushed it to magenta, and then I took the saturation down, and that's released a, a lot of, of the green. But then you'll see here where it's injecting magenta, right, because I pushed it to magenta. So if I want to get rid of that, uh, I would just back this down a little bit and it'll start taking the magenta back out. But you can see that it's in here and here and here because that's where the heaviest green pixels were. So that's the way it was lit. That's the reason why it was looking that way. So this will take a little bit of it out. Not a lot because I didn't move very much of the slider. So you can see it's very, very, very little that went away. Um, probably take it down to 25 and then reduce the saturation even more and click calculate and see what happens yeah okay yeah because I brought the saturation so it's allowing the magenta to go through so that's too much so let's bring the saturation up to 50 percent click calculate So remember, I took green away. So let's go back to, well, I closed my color chart, didn't I? Um, so let's go to HSL color chart. There we go. 
So, uh, so again, so I was trying to remove green. Um, so magenta is the opposite of green. So as you reduce saturation, you're pulling the green down. And as you're doing that, it's making it more magenta. So that's basically what I've done is I took the green cast out, but now it's giving me a magenta. So to, and again, I've still got a lot of green in here, so it's not exactly pretty. It's once you do that calibrate star color in narrow band, um, you can really mess it up. But uh, you know you can try to correct it a little bit. So here's just some cyan. Um, let's do a little bit of blue going in, a little bit more blue. Uh, let's go to yellow. Let's inject some red. Let's say. And then let's bring the saturation of that up a little bit, say about 12. So we made all these changes. Let's hit calculate and just see what happens. And I was just speeding through that. I was just making some random changes just to see what would happen. Yeah, okay. So I've still got a little bit of green here. I've brought up my golds a little bit more. Blues are kind of in there. Um, if I go to blue and I push blue to cyan and then go to cyan and push more to cyan and then hit calculate let's see what happens okay so I'm starting to get a little bit of a green cast going on here because I got too much uh, so on right uh, cyan let's push that back towards red let's go to blue um, let's pull the sign back out on that. Let's push that to red a little bit. And then let's actually take blue and push it to yellow. Curious to see what that looks like. Well, I know I've created a lot of artifacts around the stars. You can see that right here. Yeah, so I took the artifacts out. Again, made it somewhat more natural, and I can even go back in and concentrate on trying to bring these up a little bit more. But as you saw from the other way, though, the, the stars didn't look bad um, on the one we did. So at least I didn't think so. Um, I thought they looked okay for what they were. And actually, I think that's the one I, I came back up and changed again. So it's probably going to look like it just did. Yeah, so there you go. So um, there you go, Alan, I hope it helped. Um, uh, just let me know if there's any unanswered questions or anything like that. Uh, I'm not gonna edit this video and do a whole bunch of stuff to it. I'm literally gonna upload it just the way it is. It's already 43 minutes long, so uh, probably took longer than I needed to on it, but hopefully this helps out. So, all right, thanks, man.